Red Film Radio, I'm David Martos. This is the 79th edition of the Mostar de Venezia. And we're here with a team of old beauty and the bloodshed. Uh, we have uh, director Laura Poitras, renowned uh, uh, artist, I would say, and photographer Nan Golding. And we have here Harry Collins and Megan Kepler. Thank you very much from pain, from pain. So um, my first question is, uh, how did you two meet? How was your first encounter? And why did you decide to tell this story together? We met in Portugal at the Lisbon Film Festival. And I was very impressed to meet her. But the people I was with, the Safdie brothers, had an argument with Jacob about Julian. Mm -hmm. So that's the first time I met her. <laughs> Laura. Well, I mean, I have, as an artist, I, I've known uh, about Nan's work and has, have admired it since, since the, the Ballad of, of Sexual Dependency was first released as a book and then as a slideshow. And so I've, I've known her work. But um, yeah, we met in, in Portugal. And then we met again um, uh, with a, an artist friend, Hito Styrel, in, in, in New York. And we were organizing a, a protest letter uh, concerning another toxic philanthropy situation. Mm -hmm. and and, and in that conversation, Nan told me that she had been documenting the work she's been doing with Payne and exposing the Sacklers for a little bit over a year. And she was looking for filmmakers to join the project. And so we, that's how I became involved in the project. And of course, I, you know, my films tend to deal with people. They're people who are like kind of in the front lines of history and who are doing something that is affecting a kind of change. I'm really interested in those stories. And I'm really interested in this story because it shows how a very small group of people can have enormous impact. And mm. that's not a given. You know, like when, when they started and they were doing these actions, the museums didn't respond. They weren't doing anything. It's not like they were like, oh my god, we need to take the names down. This is outrageous. <laughs> Their response was like, let's hire some more crisis communications yeah. people <laughs> and, some, and, some, and some spies to like follow them around yeah. and intimidate them. And, and so like what I love about the film is that maybe it's a bit of a blueprint for other organizations that you can, if you organize. It's obviously, and Nan talked about this from the very beginning, inspired by ACT UP and the work that they did in exposing what was happening with the AIDS crisis. And 80s um, and how important it, that was. So that's the kind of like I was interested in that political story. But then, of course, like Nan's work is you know it, for filmmakers and for artists, it's like it's it's groundbreaking. It's it's sort of changed the landscape of mm. cinema and of photography. And and to be able to collaborate with an artist like that was just for me an, an honor. Mm. Uh, Harry, and, and and daunting, yeah. scary as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, Megan, um, I wanted to ask you about how you recall the whole process of making this film. And have you seen the film? Uh, seen a, a Can you earlier. please oh, yeah. the mic? Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, we've seen a, a version of it, but I'm excited to see it again today in its, okay. all of its glory. But um, yeah, no, I, like Laura said, our first meetings were just Nan's closest friends um, in her living room, packed a little bit more tightly than this, probably. <laughs> but um, I think, um, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought a little bit here, Megan. Do you want to yeah. pick up? Um, it's really interesting to see the, the past four years of pain work put uh, mm. together in a film by Laura so beautifully. and to be respected in the way that we thought that they were going to have a visual impact. And there hasn't been much video from our protests. It's mostly been photos in the media. And so it's really an interesting experience to relive the, the protests and to see them, you know, and under, understand uh, how much work went into all of, all of them. You know, we have very clear demands when we do museum protests. And we've only done six. And we make sure that each one is tailored to the museums mm -hmm. and very impactful as much as we can be with you know, our materials. And I think it's important to say, and Megan is a co-producer on the film, and Nan is a producer on the film, and uh, music consultant, and, and photographer. <laughs> so this is really absolutely in one, this is a collaboration. You know, this was okay. went into, they began the film, they entrusted me yeah. um, uh, and the producers to, to um, complete it. And so, but I just think this is, you know, really important. This is a collaboration. Like, okay. So, yeah. Nan, you've been a pretty public person your whole life. Um, you've been advocating uh, fair causes uh, for decades. But how did you uh, manage to measure your level of exposure in this project alongside mm -hmm. with Laura? 
in terms of what I gave Laura. What you gave about yourself, your life, your feelings, your, your vision on, on, on your own life? Because I was talking to Laura, and that was really what inspired all that. It was like therapy without a therapist. She asked deep, penetrating questions, and I was able to talk very, go very deep with her. And that's where the voiceover came. And it's extremely personal. And can you imagine a two-hour film made about you? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> My life is not so interesting. Uh, you'd be, you'd no. be surprised. No, no. But yeah, I've been public for a long time. But my public was pretty much limited to the art world and to people who knew the art world. So this is a wider public. And that makes it, puts it in a different context to think that it will be streaming someday on TV uh -huh. and anyone can watch it. But the uh, title is so good that I can't see how any anyone would uh, be able to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in terms of, I, I just think it's important to acknowledge the bravery of Nan's work, not just in the film and what she talks about, but throughout her, her mm -hmm. career as a, as, as a photographer and as an artist. Most people don't take the kind of risk she does mm -hmm. in terms of their intimate, what, what, the, what, they're, what they share. And there's a line in the film where she says the wrong things are, are kept private in the society and it destroys people. And, but the, these things of why they're kept private is because of societal pressures, mm -hmm. you know? And the shifting of blame from society to the individual, right? I mean, this is what, at least in American society, right? So people are maybe ashamed to talk about something like addiction or uh, being battered, right? And but the the problem is the you know the pharmaceutical industry that profits off of people's pain. The problem is the violence in society. The problem is you know like we we often d direct towards individuals what should be directed towards societal culpability. And but it's I, I just have to say that um, it, you know the bravery that goes in that is involved in this film is you know um, it's it's really um, for me. Um, breathtaking and you know and I've worked with a lot of brave people I've made films with a lot of brave people hmm. well congratulations on this big opportunity of being here uh, in competition in Venice I, I'm afraid our time is up uh, we've been a few minutes with the team of all the blood all, all the beauty and the bloodshed yeah, yeah. Uh, Laura Nan uh, Harry Megan thank you very much thank you. Thank well, I'm David Martos we're in the 79th edition of the Mostar de Venezia and it's this is Fred the Festival Insider